What's up, everybody? This is your boy Chainsaw. Um, looks like Missouri GOP has had a busy couple of weeks, um, basically going mask off, um, but not quite as mask off as they've been recently. But um, we're going to take a look at some of this um, historical archive that we had um, gathered from uh, from some mutuals on uh, on on uh, the Twitter.com and some of their documentations of the happenings uh, amongst amongst and about Moleg over the last couple of weeks. Uh, so let's take a look here and see if we can make any sense of this nonsense. Ugh. Error. There we go. Uh, Jess Piper had tweeted out um, a screen grab from uh, uh, Representative Ben Baker. Y'all remember him, right? Y'all y'all remember Ben Baker? Y'all oh, y'all remember Ben Baker? He's a uh, He's this guy. Everybody remembers Ben Baker. He's that guy, right? Okay. So she tweeted this out from Representative Ben Baker. This is a Missouri rep who wrote legislation to force schools to buy and display in God we trust signage in public schools. He also thinks that being gay is a religion and should qualify under the Establishment Clause, separation of church and state. Public schools can teach LGBTQIA+, and DEI religion as taxpayer-funded political subdivisions, apparently. These are the schools indoctrinating students. It's cool to teach LGBTQIA+, and DEI religion to your kiddos. Is it, Ben? Is it? Is that cool? Is that fundamentally cool to you? Just do it on your own dime. Separation of church and state. Based Thomas Jefferson? Meanwhile, so Pride for Missouri uh, tweeted this out. I believe, what was that? Just a few days later, right? This was uh, the 14th. This is just a couple of days later. Um, these same people with their hands up in praise will gladly attack my family with our hands up. Hypocritical Christian nationalism on full display at the Missouri Capitol. And yes, that's, 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 that's it. Yesterday, Moleg. Right. This is where these people, like, you know, work and shit. Do it on your own dime. Separation of church and state. But what I'm assuming is a Christian rock band. Um, there were a few other uh, photos of this uh, praise uh, uh, gig here. Separation of church and state, you say. Uh, Senator Denny Hoskins, CPA. It's been a long night, but we uh, passed the SAFE Act to protect kids from woke transgender policies. One more vote, and then it's headed to the Missouri House. Thank you to everyone for your prayers and support. We're a long shot away from that. Hi, State Senator Denny Hoskins here. I just want to give you a quick update about uh, one of the bills that I've sponsored, uh, the SAFE Act. We It's Tuesday morning. We've been up for about 24 hours. We were able to break the Democrat filibuster and get something passed. It is a full ban on puberty blockers as well as hormone treatments and surgeries here in the state. Uh, I want to make sure that we are able to protect Missouri kids. It, it's been a long night, but... Uh, we were able to get it done, and now it just requires one more vote to send it over to the House. Hi, Protect Missouri kids. This is um, this is quote tweeted by the same uh, person who had state representatives uh, telling him that uh, if he didn't like the way things were done here, you know, him and his family could just move. Um, and move they likely shall. Of course, it's coming from base Laura Burkhart. Missouri State Senator, gubernatorial candidate, most punchable face, Bill Eigel, on trans kids and those who support them. State called by the citizens of this state to be the protector of those rights, to be the protector of the vulnerable, and for anyone to claim that someone would leave this state because they cannot mutilate children legally in this state. My response to that, if someone is disappointed in Missouri because they can't harm kids here, we are better if they are gone. We are better if trans kids are gone. So to follow up, 
Um, this is directly out of Hitler's playbook in his efforts to eradicate the LGBTQ community from existence. This is the epitome of history repeating itself. Which side are you on? Uh, the forgotten history of the world's first transgender clinic. The, uh, God, I hate that they spelled it in English, but whatever. Institute for Sexual Wissenschaft uh, Berlin uh, would be a century old if it hadn't fallen victim to Nazi ideology. It was uh, the literal first place, the ground zero for the, uh, the Nazi uh, uh, book burning uh, ritual that they had since uh, come to be known for. And are since taking up all across the U.S., apparently. Um, speaking of base Laura Burkhart, um, apparently, and I, I'm assuming that these were, no, the, this was, I think, Facebook. It looks like this has a Facebooky type of feel. Um... Chuck Basie, 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 in case you hadn't heard, this former Missouri State Representative is running for Columbia Public School Board. This feels like a threat to me. Um, and then tagged uh, Jess Piper, who similarly <laughs> received, um, this guy's just got him loaded. He's just ready to ready to go um, with, with hate memes. It's great. Um, nothing to see here, just a school board candidate for the Columbia Public Schools responding to me on Facebook. I have heard of Facebook. Um, Columbia Public Schools values diversity. Unironically, this gentleman here wearing Confederate pants. Um, unironically, um, not a uh, white person in the chair. Um, unironically, Chuck Bazoo. Um, lack of melanin. Um, but that's, but that's okay. Some have said the same about me. I would love it if someone could watch these two clips and so we will then convince me that the transgender clinic whistleblower wasn't working in collusion with members of the Missouri GOP. Yeah. Hashtag. Moleg returns from spring break and have vowed to undermine doctors and parents by banning gender affirming care. I can't stop thinking about this. Missouri State Representative Justin Sparks still sponsoring HB 540, which bans trans health care. Listen to what he said at his uh, church recently. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, this is this is what these fellers do at church. Justin Sparks. So, so when I got there, I had a little bit of experience with gender dysphoria. Um, especially being in law enforcement and this phenomena that has exploded in our culture. And uh, so I decided to file a bill to ban transgender surgery, puberty blockers, and cross-sex hormones for children. And I did that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Just, just want to point out um, everyone who is mad about the, uh, the, the gender um, dysphoria thing, <laughs> something about this guy, you know, and this is, this is not a joke. Okay. This is not a joke. I'm not being ironic here, but something about people who post things like this, tell me that they are dealing with some sort of um, dysmorphia that is otherwise affecting their ego in some sort of way. I mean, listen, your boy chainsaw enjoys a good shoot now and again too, you know, um, target practice, fun AF. Um, I like, I like things that go boom, boom, boom. Okay. Um, but like, what are we, what are we doing here? What are, what are we doing here? Okay. So thing else. You and, all right. We're just going to watch the whole thing again. So, Fuck. so when I got there, I had a little bit of experience with gender dysphoria, um, especially being in law enforcement and this phenomena that has exploded in our culture. And, uh, so I decided to file a bill to ban transgender surgery, puberty blockers, and cross-sex hormones for children. And I did that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> and, I, and I did that, and folks came up to me, and this is true. They were like, I was going to do that, but ugh, you just got here. Do you really, really want to go down that road? And I had no idea what they were talking about, you know, nor did I care. Because from my background, and it's a different background than others that go to Jeff City, my background is in police work. So if, if it's the right thing to do, you don't care about anything else. You do it because it's the right thing to do. Yeah. The right thing to do. We are better if they are gone. 
the right thing to do. All right. All right. Continue, sir. That's right. That's right. I don't know any. That's I don't right. know how to do anything different. And I think that they definitely caught some people off guard for sure. Because they're like, we don't know what to do with you. And I said, well, this is this is how it works. And they're like, well, that's probably never going to happen. Yeah. But divinely, divinely, these bills came forth. My bill that I filed came forth with others, two other representatives and senators on the Senate side that filed the same bills. But the Lord had those bills come forth to be heard in committee and debated at the exact moment in time that a whistleblower from, if you've seen this in the news, from Washington University came forth and she's on the inside and basically blew the lid off of this entire thing. And I mean, that's, that's why. That's why Blew the lid off this entire thing, divinely. <laughs> Majestic coincidence, um, even. All right. And so when her testimony came out in conjunction with an investigation by the Attorney General and our legislation that we had already filed at the very beginning of session in January, well, look what happened. All of these forces came together at the exact right moment, and it looked like the most amazing uh, coincidence that you've ever seen, but we know better, don't we? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And so when her testimony came out. Now, and we've already covered um, on, on uh, this, this stream, um, or in previous streams, rather, the, the, in the, the, the discrepancies um, with regard to that whistleblower and the uh, claims that she had made. Basically, it was an, um, <clears throat> an overzealous and overblown position of secretary who was taking it upon herself um, to make medical diagnoses of patients that she was not qualified to make and was not actually treating because, again, she was a fucking secretary. But, you know, it's cool. It's cool. It's whatever. Um, the hand of God must have also guided her um, through her medical uh, scientific uh, op opinion and whatnot. Um, follow Aaron Reed on Twitter for more um, debunking of that whole situation. Um, yikes. So that brings us to JoJo. JoJo, what is this? What is this? What is this? Hey, can we get some folks in Moleg to condemn Ben Baker's grievances about being a Mayo dude? I'm not going to lie, it's kind of cringe when she says that, but at the same time, it's kind of hilarious. And so this is a quote, allegedly, it's from Ben Baker, you know, this guy, um, you know, how, how much we trust Jojo, right? Um, so allegedly, this is from Ben Baker, okay, okay. It's leading to a less competent workforce in many situations, Baker said. It's not competency anymore, it's the woke agenda. That has crept into everything. Not only is diversity not a thing, Baker explained, but it's causing more discrimination in hiring. That's what's really happening. It's so bad, Baker said. It's getting where you can't find a good white doctor anymore. If you're a white male, it's almost impossible to get into a medical school in this state. It doesn't matter how well a white male does academically, Baker said, indicating the fix was in. Jojo. Come on. Come on, Jojo. You really expect me to believe that a sitting state representative said something so ridiculous? The more I discover about this trend, the more concerning it becomes because it's this idea of seeking employees based upon what skin color they may have or what they identify as. Um, and, and, and instead of a merit-based approach that we've always used when it comes to hiring employees and, you know, where it's always been, you're chosen because of your skill or your experience or your education, uh, but it's being traded for one where diversity becomes priority. And I'm telling you, it's leading to a less competent workforce in many situations because it's not about competency anymore. And this it's just a woke agenda that's crept into everything. Right now, if you're a white male, it's almost impossible to get into a medical school in this state, in our institutions. No matter what your academic achievements might be, 
And like, for instance, the University of Missouri spends over $2 million, taxpayer dollars, just on their diversity, equity, inclusion program at that institution. It's just crazy. Society's losing its mind over these woke ideas that I believe further divide us and, and, and also lead to a less competent workforce. Imagine your airline pilot being chosen because of their skin color or what gender they identify as rather than competency. Uh, and so, and in many cases, they're also lowering the standards of academics to accommodate diversity as a priority. It's and just I, crazy. And I, and I, well, um, um, yeah, um, surely this is taken out of context, right? <laughs> Sitting Missouri State Representative Ben Baker woke up last Thursday and decided to go on a radio rant about how tough it is to be a white guy. He rambles on to explain that a less white male workforce is a less competent workforce. His words, not mine. Absolutely wild. And, and you know, there there is a bit of grain, a grain of truth in that it is really hard for the average rural white working class um there are the children of of you know your average uh, rural working class americans to um to go into the workforce um in a medical field in a position like i don't know uh, something requiring a doctorate and that entry level barrier is cost of education it's education cost this is one of those things that people like ben baker do not give a fuck about right so bro you you're you know if this is something that you really feel strongly about i guess um you're a symptom of your own problem you legitimately made this problem yourself and refuse to do anything about it or even acknowledge that there is anything that you could be doing about it otherwise um with, with the cost with the cost of 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 uh, secondary education um, and the lack of resources um, given to people in uh, rural Missouri. Um, it, it's not a wonder that this even could be um, a very uh, decrepit leg to stand on. Most rural communities uh, in the state of Missouri have an average median income um, less than a third of the national average. That's, that's, that's unironic when you consider um, the way that the state legislation has, has been running the place for the last 20 years. And if you consider the representation that we have uh, with regard to bringing jobs here um, from our from our our, our representatives uh, at the federal level, um, folks like Jason Smith, Josh Hawley, uh, could be doing a lot more to do anything to help rural uh, communities and the rural working class and white people. If if you want to break it down like some sort of an essentialist um, weirdo. I'm assuming that when it comes to other areas of essentialism, that Ben Baker is not a fan. So, I don't know. Fash gonna fash. Um, thank God for people um, like like Face Laura Burkhart and Face JoJo for for bringing this to my attention because um, I would have missed it. I'm not gonna lie. I would have missed this one. Wow. And so, <clears throat> to further on this narrative of the most exciting shit happening in uh, Moleg over the last couple of weeks. Thus far, that I've found, um, we again turn to JoJo. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, Missouri GOP is on an authoritarian roll this week. Um, what is the quote tweeting? Jess Piper screen grabbing St. Pete. All three <laughs> friends of the stream. Um, the budget chairs, budget zeros out all the budget chairs, budget zero edit the budget chairs but the budget chairs budget zeros out all i feel like i feel like we might be missing a comma here or i can't english the budget chairs budget zeros out all of state funding for public libraries he's openly doing so because two state librarian associations are suing the state over the book ban law passed last year hey weren't we just talking about book bans and shit with the you know institute for sex Vision soft um, no, that'd be weird. That'd be super weird. That's right. 
if you believe a law passed by the Missouri GOP violates your uh, rights and the freedom of speech um, and choose to sue the state over it, not even with public dollars, from what I can tell, you can expect the Missouri GOP to take away all of your funding. I hate to use the old uh, 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 liberal tagline here, but distraction? It's really not, though. It kind of coincides um, with, with, the whole, with the whole culture war agenda. Um, but we're talking about dollars now um, instead of just genocidal rhetoric um, towards children. So this is something that um, very well could be an effective tool for the left um, if utilized correctly. This is why I said before and why I got so pissed off whenever people decided they wanted to have a fucking debate with me on fucking uh, social media about the importance of electoralism um, because assholes like that are passing legislation and we're just going to sit on our asses and I don't know, like think about it. Um, it's wild to me. Get involved. Um, write letters, write emails, um, get in touch with other folks, show up at, uh, at meetings. If you can um, carpool, if you, if you otherwise can't. And um, you know, if, at the very least, um, you know, be, be open about it. Look at the shit that actually matters. Look at the shit that is essential and throw away all the rest because it's garbage. Don't let uh, lethargy and woke scoldery win the day because in some communities, it's top tier, man. And it's doing nothing um, for people who actually need the help. Wild. And so we'll end with this. <laughs> I watched a video just now in which Democratic Representative Peter Meredith, a.k.a. St. Pete the Homie, Gave a rundown of the week in Missouri. In it, he said the Senate passed a bill that would criminalize gender-affirming care and ban trans kids playing, in the, playing sports in the state. The budget for public libraries was completely zeroed out by the budget committee chair uh, for spite. The House passed a billion-dollar corporate tax cut for the wealthiest Missourians, coming after a different billion-dollar tax cut just a few months back. Finally, the Republican legislature also passed a bill to make it illegal for a private business to require their employees uh, be vaccinated against COVID. Look around. This is life under a supermajority, and this was just a snapshot of one week. They don't care about us. We'll take a look at the St. Pete video, and then we'll take a look at the uh, response. I think we have that in order. All right. St. Pete on TikTok! Well, y'all, it's been a week in the Missouri legislature already, and we are only halfway through it. The Senate passed a bill yesterday uh, that would criminalize gender affirming care uh, and also ban kids playing sports where it best suits them, yet bullying trans kids some more. The House passed a billion dollar corporate tax cut and tax cut for billionaires, even after they passed a different billion dollar tax cut just six months ago, and it hasn't even gone into effect yet. Meanwhile, the budget chair's sub took a billion and a half out of our budget, saying we couldn't afford to do things like uh, early childhood education or child care subsidies that even the governor had proposed. And they passed a bill that would make it illegal for a private business to require that their employees have a COVID vaccine in order to make the workplace safer for everyone else or their customers. I could go on and on. One highlight in the budget, though, or low light, I should probably say. The budget chair sub also uh, got rid of all state funding for public libraries. That's right, he zeroed it out completely and defunded them. Why, you might ask? Well, because apparently two librarian associations in the state are suing the state over a book ban that the legislature, the GOP legislature, passed last year. That's right. They felt that the law that the GOP passed last year violated their rights and the First Amendment and are exercising their right to challenge it in court using their private association that they all pay dues to. And what does the Missouri legislature do? They say, oh, how dare you exercise your rights? How dare you claim that we violated your First Amendment rights? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to defund your libraries completely. Y'all, that's some fascism. Not mincing words. Be there, St. Pete. All right. And lastly, the response on Jess Piper's massively, massively overblown um, TikTok channel. Nah, but she based, though. That's the thing. You don't get there if you're not. Sub also uh, got rid of all state funding for public libraries. 
you heard that right. That was Missouri State Representative Peter Meredith saying that the state of Missouri zeroed out the budget for public libraries. Zero. House Committee takes aim at I-70 child care funding in Missouri governor's budget. Budget Chairman Cody Smith also wants to cut all aid to libraries in retaliation for a lawsuit challenging a new state law. Smith is targeting libraries because the Missouri Library Association joined the ACLU and the Missouri Association of School Libraries in a suit challenging a new state law limiting the materials available in school libraries. Smith wants to cut $4.5 million, or the full budget, for state aid to libraries in retaliation for the lawsuit. Now that's bad, but there's more. Budget Chairman Cody Smith also wants to cut $134.5 million to child care and pre-kindergarten education. We have child care deserts in this state. I live in one. I had to drive 20 miles out of my way to find someone who could take care of my daughter. From the Missouri Chamber of Commerce, new research shows Missouri loses $1.35 billion in annual economic opportunity due to child care gaps. I mean, Democrats have been saying for years that we need to invest in child care, and Governor Parson approved this budget that Cody Smith is tearing to pieces. Cody Smith went after Medicaid funding. He didn't want to fund the system even though we had approved it as voters. Cody Smith regularly talks about the need to give away billions of dollars in tax cuts to the wealthiest Missourians. But the worst part, and friends, this is the worst part. Cody Smith ran unopposed in the last election cycle. No one opposed him. No one ran against him. Friends, we are giving away our state. So look, with the people who want to argue with me about electoralism doesn't matter and that there's, you know, I, I live I live in Southwest Missouri, and all of my uh, representatives um, don't give a shit about me, and and whatever. If they're all Republican. Uh, fucking run against them, then. I mean, find the fucking candidate. Look, you're all on Facebook, I assume. Um, all the ones who decided they wanted to uh, 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 start some shit. You're all on Facebook. You have Facebook. Um, reach out to people. Find out who your local county commissioner is. Find out who your Who's running for that office? Um, find out who is running for your state rep. Find out who's running for, for dog catcher. Find out. And if no one's doing it, you fucking do it. Or, you know, you, you uh, convince your, your, you know, your, your sister, your mom, your dad, your cousin, your, you know, your brother, your auntie, your uncle, your grandma, whoever, um, that they need to run for that office. Find someone who's more qualified than you. You personally go out there and find someone who's more qualified than you to do it, or you fucking do it. Or, you know, just shut the fuck up when I'm posting um, about voting being important. Because th this shit right here makes voting not important. And this is what they're counting on, folks. This is exactly what they're counting on. This is what they've been counting on for quite some time now to the Republicans. We are giving away our schools, our roads, our hospitals, our health care, our bodily autonomy, because we don't oppose these people in elections. In 2022, 66 of Missouri's 163 House districts had no Democratic nominee on the ballot. That's what? What? One more time. Well, one more time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Rewind. Rewind some more. In elections. In 2022, 66 of Missouri's 163 House districts had no Democratic nominee on the ballot. Right. 66 seats out of 163 just show up and like, I'm, I'm, I'm your state rep now. Yay! Because everybody who lives in my district is a Republican or fucking dumb or dumb and lethargic that's nearly 2.5 million missourians living in those 66 districts that don't have the option to vote for a democrat cody smith is from carthage missouri they just show up right this guy is from carthage so like if you live anywhere near carthage like fucking we got another election coming up you know like uh, for fuck's sake like there's nothing i can do all of the people in office don't give a fuck about me. I don't understand how electoralism works, but I'm going to complain about it. <sighs> there are folks in Carthage, Missouri, that don't believe in what he's doing, but they didn't have a choice. There was no one else to vote for. Wrong. They had a choice. 
they had a choice. Any fucking one of them could have gotten together and been like, you. You. Honestly, that's why Jess Piper ran. Is when, when she got started, there was nobody, her fucking, her, her fucking uh, state rep. Uh, what, what was that? The uh, 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 House seat one, I think. Um, district one in Missouri. The first district in Missouri, right? Our district designated as uh, one, right? PP district. Okay, it was it was it was her her entire fucking voting district was uh, of district one was so covered in piss that nobody wanted to run for office. And this this chick did it. She did it. She was the one. She's a fucking school teacher. She's I think retired school teacher. I don't know her fucking lore. Okay, like we don't fucking hang out on the weekends and shit, but like. She did other shit. She wasn't always just on TikTok being based. Okay, broken microphone kind of fixed. But yeah, she wasn't just like somebody on TikTok being based all day. Okay? Just like mean tweeting fucking state representatives. Like she did other shit. And she was like, Man, fuck all this, bro. Like, I'm gonna run for office and shit. And, you know, that's that's why we talking about her. That's why we know who the fuck she is. Because she was just fucking just the people. And then she was like, man, this is stupid. Like, why the fuck do I live in a place where, you know, nobody's running for office? Like, I'm going to be the fucking one. I'm going to be the fucking person. Like, be the fucking person. Reach into your fucking asshole and pull out that inner Jess Piper. But we can do something about it. You can join Blue Missouri. You can help fund. Yeah, and now she's also running this now. So. That's a thing candidates that will run against folks like Cody Smith. We're a community. We're a group. We don't use you like an ATM. We talk about what's going on. We even fund candidates in rural parts of the state. You can join us. Text Piper to 33777 for a better day in Missouri. There you go. There you have it. What else is there to say? Get out there. Peg, you're it. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the end of the segment. Um, listen, if you like this kind of content, I will treat you like an ATM. I need you to go to uh, kofi.com slash chainsawccc, or you can go to chainsawccc.com slash subscribe and support the stream by making a small monetary contribution. Um, I would greatly appreciate it. And continues to allow me to put this kind of content out there um, to keep folks informed of local happenings and national news and other things. But anyway, that's going to do it for this segment. Um, we'll catch you on the flippity fling flog. Rock and roll.